Stay tuned because Good Sports is coming next. Good Sports was recorded live on Saturday, March 11th. Welcome to Good Sports, the Kansas City Sports and Fitness Show. I am Steve Fish. I'm the publisher of Kansas City Sports and Fitness Magazine. Today we're here at the Kansas City Ice Center located on Johnson Drive, two miles west of 435, where you can skate on their outdoor pavilion or on their indoor ice rink. Call 913-441-3033 or visit their website, kcicecenter.com, for more details on public skate sessions, spring hockey, upcoming camps, and their Learn to Skate and Learn to Play hockey programs. Now, before we get started with the show, I want to tell everyone that our current issue of Kansas City Sports and Fitness can be picked up at over 700 locations in KC, and it's absolutely free. Also in March, KC Sports began our 20th year celebration as the Sports Illustrated of Kansas City. Now in our hockey report presented by the KC Ice Center, we bring you news about KC's traveling high school hockey team, the Jets, and their playoff hopes as the hockey season comes to an end. And in Chloe's Corner, the Ren Insurance Tennis Report, we introduce you to Rebecca Faulkner, a Shawnee Mission East alum who's playing tennis at Augustana University. James Poister is one of the great writers who contributes to Kansas City Sports and Fitness every month, and he also hosts the second half uh, hour of Good Sports Radio that you can hear every Wednesday afternoon. His is at 3.30. The the first part starts at 3 o'clock on ESPN 1510 and ESPN 99.3. JP, thank you so much for coming out here to this ice rink and freezing your tail off and talking with me. Warmer in here than it is outside, almost. Uh, yeah, it is. It's it's a uh, yeah. Today is that rare um, snowy day that we had in March. Uh, by the time this show airs, it'll probably be eighty degrees outside. <laughs> so, uh, but let's 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 change the topic from the cold to uh, summer uh, summertime sports, spring and summertime sports. Let's talk a little bit about the Royals and what's going on with the Royals. Um, you made a statement to me. Uh, that they're not they're not going to do it this year they're not going to win their division um, you know I agree with you completely let's uh, let's talk about the reasons why that we're not going to see that and the first thing to, to talk about because it's the mon- most number of players is the pitching Man. Um, I don't see anything great uh, in any of their starters <laughs> really I don't see anything great in the bullpen I mean you know they got Herrera but if they can can they get the ball to Herrera go ahead and fill me in on your thoughts yeah you know it's it's interesting what they've done with the starters you know it's not like we have like in years past maybe one really good one and then yeah. four number fives you know yeah. we kind of got five number threes I mean <laughs> Duffy is always the on off guy you know last year we saw what you know he took the ball and ran with it but we've seen him in years past struggle. We've seen him get yeah, injured. Yeah. You know, we picked up Hamill, which was, you know, kind of a, I think we, we needed to pick up somebody with the passing of Ventura. Uh, Carnes has the talent. He had a good first half last year. But then again, we know what's going to happen in the second half. Kennedy, we know that he was 21-4 and four in 2011. But does that mean he's going to be, you know, 11-14 and 14 this year? <laughs> uh, you know, Vargas, the big question mark there. I mean, yeah. he's looking okay in spring training. It's like, I think if we took our pitching staff and said, who's the number one? I think Duffy is obviously number one. After that, you know, Kennedy, we got a good staff. The question is, is is the potential going to be performance again this year? Because, you know, we've seen like with Volquez in the past, boy, he had a good year, and then all of a sudden we saw him not so much. But uh, I don't mind this. I don't mind it. It's it's right. It's not a good, it's at least not a bad starting staff. That's kind of the, the flip side. But compared to what we got in the division, especially with the Indians, it's not the Indians pitching staff. Right. So right. we probably have five number five starters if they were on the Indian staff. <laughs> but I, I don't mind it, but I don't think it's good, but not great. Yeah, and, and we know Dayton Moore, you know, he had to go for the best that was out there, and he, he certainly did his job with that. It's just, it's just so iffy on, you know, if two of, them are, are not, two of them are good, that's great. If two of them, two or three of them are bad, then, you know, then they really suffer. Yeah, well, Wood's, Wood's a nice pickup, too. Wood and Carnes could be a couple yeah. of long, long relief guys. So I have a feeling we're going to see probably at least six or seven different starters this year. Uh, in this rotation, hopefully not at once. But, I, I, again, it's it's not a staff that I think is a championship caliber. You don't have that one guy that go, hey, we got a four-game losing streak. At least we know we're going to get a win. Yeah, yeah. We don't have that guy. Yeah, to break, to break that. Yeah, absolutely. And then you move to the bullpen. And the bullpen is, you know, as I mentioned, you know, Herrera might be the, the guy this year. He certainly has proven himself over the last couple of seasons uh, with what he can do and how he can perform. But who's going to get? You know, the, the the Royals' way is is seventh, eighth, ninth, uh, different guys in there. You know, Soria, mm, Soria is a 
big giant question mark. Uh, he did not. He did not perform right. the, the way we wanted him to. What's your thoughts? Well, you know, you, you look at that. We had the, we kind of invented that seven eight nine scenario. Mm-hmm. I mean, we really took it to the next level. The, the Reds kind of did it with the Nasty Boys back in the in the eighties, late eighties, early nineties. <laughs> but but the Royals kind of reinvented the way. Hey, get it to the bullpen, and you're going to win with the HDH yeah. show. But now, you know, the Davis. Uh, moving on, and Herrera, and of course Soria. I liked the signing when we got him, but then oh, yeah. I thought it was one of those things, well, he's coming back to Kansas City, he'll find his way. He always found his way to get some saves. Obviously, last year was just atrocious, and I don't think Ned handled them well. You know, we've got some guys, a lot of lefties in the bullpen that could come out, but it's not the HDH show. It's going to be, you know, right. it's not going to be high quality stuff. It's going to be, you know, analog. I don't know how else to put it. Uh, <laughs> you know, an antenna. But uh, yeah, it, it's just almost like they've con- tr- completely reinvented themselves with the pitching and the offense as well. So who knows what this Royals team's going to do? But uh, you're right, that bullpen is iffy at best. And I was kind of surprised they didn't go after some other players, but. I'm not a, a relievers are type of people that just kind of grow into the positions. Not like they groom them in the minors as much. They just kind of well, you can't make it as a starter. Yeah. And you're yeah. now. I mean, look yeah. at Davis. He was a number four, number five starter with yeah. Tampa. Yeah. Comes up, becomes one of the top closers in baseball. Yeah, yeah, definitely for sure. So then now we can move around the infield. Um, we'll start at third base. Mustakas. I mean, you know, everybody thinks great things about him, and he's a quality player, and he's a quality teammate, and all that kind of stuff. But he's coming back from injury. How long is it going to take him to get back up to speed? I know this is a big year for him because he goes into free agency, but how long is it going to take him to get get going? Well, they're just starting to put him at third base right now as we speak, and so uh, he's that guy that's a fighter. I think he'll play hard. He's a he's a kind of of all the players that we'll be talking about. He reminds me of the true royal that we want to have on the team. Yes, cheerleader player, uh, not necessarily always a team leader, but I mean he's always out there on the on the top, but. Yeah, I, it, this is a big year for, for Moustakis because mm-hmm. it is a contract year. Mm-hmm. Usually bank air in the players' favor because they're going to have better stats, which helps the team out. Right. Yet he's not what I would say in the top five third basemen in the American League. So it's right. not like I think he's one of those guys, like a lot of the players have a lot more value on Kansas City and value to us than he would on another team. So uh, I don't see him maybe going out and hitting 280 again. And, again, it depends where they bat him in this lineup. I mean, who knows what Ned's going to do with that lineup. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, yeah, that, that is that, on the bottom of my list is Ned Yost. Oh, yeah. As, a lot of as people's a, lists. As, yeah, as a question mark. Uh, second base. Second base is second base has just been a problem for the Royals for so I can't even remember back. Uh, you know, I mean, you can go back to Frank White. But, but no, I can't even remember back when it was solid. Yeah, uh, on second base, and it's not now. No, not at all. I mean, and, and that's kind of been that that side of the infield, and of course, right field as well. But uh, you know, Merrifield kind of came up, and he kind of reminded me of right-handed hitting Ben Zobras, play multiple positions, and you need a you need a switch army knife player, and that's where I hope yeah, Merrifield yeah, yeah. stays because he could play third. Colognes could could play possibly. Uh, Montessi seems to be the guy now. He had the concussion scare. Looks like that's going to be okay. He's going to be okay. Yeah. yeah, and so you know, I like. Montessi is the one that they've always been talking about. They brought him up young, and it's one of the few players the Royals have brought up in their, you know, teens, 20s to say, yeah. hey, look, we want to see what you can do. I believe we're going to see something in Montessi this year. I've been projecting him to be the starter this year at second base, mm-hmm. where a lot of people say he should one more year in AAA. I say get him up now. I mean, yeah. this is that year where you don't know. There's so many unknowns, so you might as well put a guy like that. And I see him possibly be in the second base. But uh, who knows? I mean, maybe we might get that Frank White player, a long-term Royal, playing second base in Mondesi. That would be nice. That would be nice to see them solidify that because that side of the infield, except for Hosmer, you know, and into the outfield, is, has just been, again, another one of those big, giant question marks. Mm-hmm. And we're, you know, we're, uh, we're back in that, that same spot with right field is – you know, an uncertainty as to what we have out there. I mean, supposedly the uh, solar's got power and, and, you know, brings the things that, that we want to get, but we don't know anything about this guy, really. He just hasn't played as much as we'd like to know. I mean, there's not really that much history on him. Yeah, there's a lot to say about what's going to happen in that outfield. You know, when right <laughs> field is probably, you know, it's a position Kane probably should play more, um, but they're going to put him in center, but they could put him in right. Uh, Solar could he could obviously you know play right field in DH. Um, he's got a little stigma coming about the way he hustles or lack of is there he, you yeah. know when he's in Chicago, but that power is kind of raw and it kind of goes against the grain of what the Royals usually go. We want speed and and you know fine defense out there 
you know, out there at the K. But, uh, again, Dayton seems to be that guy that makes moves that we question, and most of them we very rarely say, well, you know, we, we thought Alex Rios was the fix, and Rios, you yeah. know, his first game hit a home run, and then he gets sick or hurt and all this, and he never <laughs> became – hand or something. Yeah, his yeah. hand. Everything just banged up. He did come through the postseason, I felt, but he was the guy that, that I thought would be a good right fielder. So – Maybe other than that, I mean, at least we don't have Morales out there playing right field like we did a little <laughs> bit last year. Uh, but, yeah, I, I think Lisa Royals have some options. But, you know, you don't want to just have name that lineup when you're playing Major League Baseball. You want to know these are the guys that are going to play so the, t- the defense gets in a rhythm and knows who's who out there. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, certainly I, I grew up in St. Louis, and they had that solid, solid lineup that always started every game, and then every once in a while somebody would slip in there, and it was usually just that utility guy that would come in uh, or something like that because they were pinch hitting for somebody, and that's what I grew up with. But I'm not seeing that with the with the Royals. And let's let's jump to the outfield and go to from from the uh, you know, the right side to the left side. Alex Gordon signs this gigantic contract. You know, good for him, uh, but not good for the Royals necessarily. He had a lousy season last season, and and you know, can he? Can he recover from that? I would think he can, but can he recover from that? Well, you know, you had 47 RBIs the year of the World Series, 40 RBIs, I think, last year, and 100 mm. some games. You know, that's mm. that's not a good performer. Mm-mm. Um, Mm-mm. Gordon, you know, mentioned wanting to play a little bit of center field this year to add maybe the value. This is a year that, that, that I think we will know whether or not Alex Gordon's going to be worth the money, at least yeah. gonna, because you see Mark Trumbo signing for a little bit less, and who would you rather have in left field, Mark Trumbo or Alex Gordon? Now, again, put the defense in there. And you might say, okay, it's an even mix. But I, I I think Alex Gordon has to have a good year. I mean, he has to. I think the Royals sign him more for yeah. the political. We just won the World Series. We don't want to break this team up. Let's keep the fans happy, you know. But now, I mean, we spent a lot of money, you know, 80-something plus million on this guy that we're going to owe. He can't be traded. Nobody's going to want to take on that. The Royals will probably eat part of that if they have to trade him. And maybe that's what happens. Maybe the you know if you know we're going to be talking, I'm sure about the moves that may happen. But Gordon, mm-hmm. I mean, obviously he's, they're not going to move him. He's going to play left. Maybe a little bit of center. Um, I I think he's going to stay in left. I mean, they keep talking about it. But Gordon's a guy that if he doesn't come through this year, the Boo Birds are going to pound him, and it's going to go back to like to his first part of his early career yeah. where he just was in a funk and never got out of it for a yeah. while. Yeah. Maybe they move him to second base. There you go. There's your solution. <laughs> Yeah, he's he's got a good glove. You know, he certainly has a good glove. He's 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 worth his money for the defense that he sure. delivers. But but yeah, you got to have that bat, and and he just uh, yeah. I, I've never I've never really been a big fan. You know, certainly you rooted for him, you rooted for him all during during the World Series sure. pushes and stuff like that. But I've just never really seen uh, you know what other people see. I guess with him uh, now, DH is also something. You know, Kendrick Morales was one of my favorite guys to watch because he was just a pure hitter and and so skilled from both sides of the plate. But you got big shoes to fill in that DH position because he delivered most yeah. of the time. Yeah, he had a little slow bat speed last yeah. year, and it looked yeah. like it wasn't going to come through, and it did. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, and the year before, obviously, some big hits. Uh, we finally got a real true, I would say, number four hitter in, in Morales. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Brandon Moss, who again, now his back's questionable, and he can play a little bit of outfield, as we know, and possibly a little bit of first base. But, yeah, the, that DH, I think we're going to see a revolving door at DH. I think you'll see, yeah. you know, I know Salvador Perez is down 25 pounds, which is good. Oh. You, know, you know, so that he, I was thinking he might DH a little bit more this year to rest him. Uh, Kane could play DH if he needed to. You still got Billy Burns that could play center if he had to. You know, Solaire could play DH if he's not doing it in the outfield. Um, it, it's, it's interesting to see, you know, even maybe put Witt in there. Just get him in for, you yeah. know, a stick. yeah. But the flexibility, maybe Terrence Gore gets some DH time. I don't know what they're going to do. But I, I just think the Royals, yeah, that was a that was a big step. And there were some hitters out there that I thought we might go after Chris yeah. Carter, and yeah. you know that would be a you know right-handed form of Morales can hit 30 home runs. But we didn't go after any of those guys. You know, Napoli. I thought we might get him a little. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, we know I wasn't going to get any big players like Canacion or anything. But we didn't get anybody like that. We got Moss, who is all right. You know, you've seen Brandon Moss play, and he yeah. plays well at the K for some reason. So maybe just sometimes maybe, that's a good reason yeah, to get maybe, him. Yeah. Maybe that's just they got him on the cheap, and that's yeah. what that's what Dayton Moore does well. He doesn't. At least we're not going. I don't think we're like moving backwards on purpose. I think he's still trying to move forward. Right. And this might just be a chess moves where we're moving back a couple to go forward later. Yeah. So let's wrap up this this segment with uh, talking about Ned. 
uh, Ned Yost. Um, with average players, he's going to be questioned on every single move that he makes, if, if, especially if they don't come through. Well, you think of that 2014 wild card game. I mean, his head was on the chopping block, and yeah. you know everybody thought it. Now he's going to be in the Royals Hall of Fame, yeah. you know, as the all-time winningest managers. Ned's going to have to manage this year. Yes. You know, the last two years, I mean, I should say 14, 15, the players played for Ned and yeah. came through. This year, he's going to have to wear that management hat. The big question will be: He's got a World Series ring. He's close to. Re- I mean, he's. I saw him at the airport on my birthday. Okay, <laughs> I saw him and Dayton Moore on the same day. It was the weirdest thing on my birthday. It was crazy. <laughs> and so I see Ned at the airport. He's FaceTiming his grandkids. He he wants to go back to his farm in Georgia. We've heard it. We know it. I mean, this will be the year that if Ned just kind of sits there and does that grimace face all year, I mean, we don't know. The Royals are going to. I mean, the, they're going to do a do or die this year yeah and and, yeah. and i think you're gonna see the royals play but ned's going to have to manage and lead this year something that i don't know we'll see the true colors come out yeah well we've we've got we've left a lot of cliffhangers yep. here uh we're going to talk uh in our next segment we'll, we'll talk a little bit about who they're losing next season and then we'll talk about the chiefs just a little bit but right now we're going to take a quick break you are watching or listening to good sports kansas city sports and fitness show we are coming to you from the kansas city ice center located two miles west to 435 on Johnson Drive. I am Steve Fish. We'll be right back. Come on out to the Kansas City Ice Center and skate on the outdoor pavilion or the indoor ice rink. And sign up now for Learn to Skate and Learn to Play Hockey classes at the Kansas City Ice Center. The KC Ice Center is located two miles west of 435 on Johnson Drive. For more information on public skating times, to register for classes, or schedule an upcoming party or group event, visit kcicecenter.com or call 913-441-3033. That's 913-441-3033. These days, we're all so busy, and many of us ignore our health and let stress turn into chronic pain. Dr. Lynn McIntosh of Kansas City Chiropractic can provide you with the proper care to relieve pain and stress, improve your health, and get more out of life. And right now, you can get an initial exam and adjustment for just $50. Mention KC Sports Magazine when you call. For more information on Dr. McIntosh and Kansas City Chiropractic, call 816-753-4600 or visit kansascitychiropractic.com. Experience a touch of the Ozarks at Winterstone Golf Course in Independence. And right now, take advantage of off-season rates. $37 on weekdays and $43 on weekends, including cart. For tee times, visit winterstonegolf.com or call 816-257-5755. Learn the basics or refine your game at the Coach's Open House held each month at Mission Bowl in Olathe. To learn more, visit missionbowl.com or call 913-782-0279. The next Coach's Open House is March 27th. So sign up today. People today use hundreds of sources to find local information online. Have you Googled yourself lately? Bad online comments can irreparably damage you and your business. For a free online strategy review, contact Market Leverage at 816-600-0564. That's 816-600-0564. Looking to buy or sell real estate? Contact Bill Halberstadt from Remax at 816-903-1519. That's 816-903-1519. Teamwork Sports provides volunteer coaches with back office team management, uniforms and equipment choices, and indoor practice fields so coaches can do what they do best, coach. Visit their website, TeamworkSportsKC.com, for more information on how Teamwork Sports can provide equipment, services, and practice facilities to your team. Teamwork Sports caters to baseball, softball, soccer, and lacrosse teams. Visit their practice facility at 310 West 80th Street, just off Warnell, or go online to TeamworkSportsKC.com. Be a part of revitalizing golf by purchasing your copy of the Golf Hospitality Association Playbook for just $20. The playbook is for golf courses, beginning golfers, marshals, and course staff. For more information on the playbook and membership perks, visit golfhospitalityassociation.org or call 816-398-4110. Whatever your sport, maximize your performance at Core Strategies Physical Therapy, Sports Performance, and Medical Fitness Center in Overland Park. The team at Core specializes in rehab and performance training for all ages and activity levels. To learn more about Core's sports-specific programs, visit coreptkc.com or call 913-322-4000. 
Welcome back to Good Sports, the Kansas City Sports and Fitness Show, the show that complements Kansas City Sports and Fitness Magazine. I am Steve Fish. Today we're here at the Kansas City Ice Center, located on Johnson Drive, two miles west of 435, where you can skate on their outdoor pavilion or on their indoor ice rink. Call 913-441-3033 or visit their website, kcicecenter.com, for more details on public skate sessions, upcoming camps, and their Learn to Skate and Learn to Play hockey programs. Now, in our current issue of KC Sports and Fitness, check out our Heartland Soccer Report presented by Market Leverage. This month, we write about the Heartland Awards Gala, which honors members of KC's soccer community. And in this issue, we honor top performers from football state champs, Harrisonville High School, and also honor the Army's 300 48th Engineer Company for their recruiting efforts. And coming up, on March 25th, we'll be at Teamwork Sports Baseball, Softball, and Soccer Facility located at 310 West 80th on the east side of Warnell. We are back for segment two of Good Sports, and once again, we're joined by James Poister. He's one of the writers that you see every month in Kansas City Sports and Fitness. You can also hear him on the radio on ESPN 1510 and ESPN 993 on Good Sports. Uh, his show airs at 3.30 on Wednesdays. Our show, Good Sports, the, the show that you're listening to right now, obviously is on at 3 o'clock on ESPN 1510 and ESPN 99.3. JP, once again, thanks for joining us. Give us some information on JPEG Sports. It's, it's, uh, it is your website. It's also a sports stream that, that you can hear Good Sports on as well. Right, yeah, we've been doing this now. Uh, well, we've been on the radio since 0404. But uh, the stream we started about three years ago. Uh, we have an Android app, uh, an Apple app, wow. and if you just type in KCSportsRadio.com on your phone, you can play it, or on your computer. But uh, we've got the same shows we've had for a little bit: Sports Mugs. We have a Bowler show that's a national show. We've got a NASCAR show, uh, Talking Baseball, of course, Good Sports, and of course we've got the KC Phantoms coming uh, seven o'clock to ten o'clock uh, live. So the Pretty pretty full schedule coming up now this uh, this summer here. So let's touch base just for a second on uh, the 2018 Royals because there's a lot of guys that are either going to be traded this year so that they can get some value for them or we're going to lose them. Uh, you know, I mean, I can say Elcides Escobar, we're going to lose him because they're paying him $6.5 million. He's going to go for a whole lot more than that somewhere else, or they're going to have to find that. You think, but, I mean, here's a guy that, that steals 17 bases, 260 hitter, and seven home runs at a position that does produce some power. Good glove, not necessarily great. Um, I think it's one of those things that is Escobar uh, probably will move on because somebody will see the value. There are a lot of times that stigma yeah. of being on back-to-back World Series teams, people think there's something special about that player. Right. They take the team away from it. Not always, but I, I think Escobar, Escobar is definitely going to be gone. Yeah, so, so some of the other guys that are, that are on track to uh, be, be a, you know, talking to other people are Hosmer, uh, Lorenzo Cain, Vargas. Vargas, we'll see what he does this year, and Moustakis. Uh, which ones do you think are going to stick? Which ones, or should they keep? And which ones do you think are going to go by? You yeah, know? you hear them all talk in the spring, and they all say we, they want to finish their career with the Royals. Of course they're going to say that. You know, Kane's a guy that kind of reminds me of Jeff Francoeur. Everybody loves him. Every player, yeah. you know, media yeah. loves him. He's a guy that can move on um, That just because a team will want him for the clubhouse. Mustak is, like we said before, not necessarily the, the best third baseman in, in the American League. His value, I think, underrated is his glove. But I, I think Moose might be a guy that stays. I think we have a better chance of keeping Moose than we do maybe anybody else. Hosmer is the guy that I think will be maybe the last hundred you know, million free agent we see. We're seeing these small contracts coming back out, you know, three years for nobody signed anybody long term this last year. They talked about collusion, but Hosmer, his age, you know, they call him the five tool guy. But he's not necessarily still that mega first baseman. Yeah, he's yeah. not in Carnacion. Mm-hmm. He's not some of these other guys that were like, you must have. I see him being traded. Though. A lot of people think he's going to be – I think he's going to be tougher to trade in a sense that we may not get as much as we want for him. Right. It's all going to depend if the Royals are in the playoff hunt. Yeah. At, at, and, and last year we were like four or five games out, and we thought we're right in it, and we didn't see anything. We stayed four or five out the whole time. So, so you couldn't you couldn't be sellers at that point. It was difficult to be a seller. Whereas if they if they know in September, uh, you know a lot of these guys are going to be gone at, yeah. at that point. But be uh, trade. Yeah. I yeah. think you'll see trades. I think if I was dating, I'd trade them anyway if it's close. At least get somebody else that's good. Maybe that has a two or three long, year long contract. But yeah. we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Again, big question marks. And now we'll let's flip over to our other big team, the uh, the Chiefs. They're they're kind of in the same boat. Uh, it's the same kind of thing. They signed Eric Berry for $78 million for six years. Good for him. 
I don't like these long-term things anyway. I, I don't like the Duffy deal. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't like any of those. I'm sure they're structured in a way where he's not going to get all of that unless he performs at a certain level. But still, to the public, that's a huge deal. Yeah, the, I mean, they wanted the Chiefs need to do something and, and letting Jamal Charles go to yeah. open up some money. I was projecting that actually Alex Smith may go too. I think a lot of people want my head for saying that. But, oh, I agree with you. I but, think, but I don't mind. I mean, you've, I've written about him how I don't yeah. think he's a Super Bowl quarterback. But that's it. The, ch- the Chiefs had to make the moves that they had to make so that uh, they can open up. And again, they got tr- the draft coming up, which we'll see how that goes. But uh, I, if I look at it this way, would I better have Barry or, or Charles? I'd rather have Barry. Yeah. I, I mean, I just think that was the pick that they had, and and I wasn't surprised that Charles was dropped. Yeah, Barry's certainly a healthier option for for sure, and you know he certainly delivers. But uh, uh, then there's Dontari Poe. What's going to happen with Poe? We don't know. Uh, is he going to get the franchise tag, or is, is he going to go? That franchise tag sure ticks those players they off. They all hate it, yeah. But but you know what? I think that that probably will be what they'll do this year if they can, and then you know then see how the draft and see what else happens. I mean, yeah. it's long, long off season here for yeah. the Chiefs. Yeah, and Alex Smith, I, uh, I'm in total agreement with you. Um, you know, I I do believe if he had a little more time, he'd certainly be a better quarterback. But if they're going to bring in a quarterback and not change that offensive line, they got to find somebody that can make a decision in three seconds and make something happen. And throw long and, and get his well, first downs. Yeah, but in three seconds, yeah. you know, who's going to be who's going to be that far out there? You know, that that's that's just a part of the issue. So I think they've got to bolster the offensive line to protect the guy, whoever the guy is. Um, but the draft, you know, I, maybe an offensive lineman, you know, for the draft, I could see that. But you know, a, a quarterback, come on, Brody Croyle, that's that's the yeah. that's the <laughs> thing that I think about with with that. But uh, you know, so th- that's, there's that's there's just a lot, a whole lot of different things that that are up in the air with that. What what do you think that they need the most? I, I think they need to. I think they need to sit there and take a look at the defining this team and saying what are we going to do because yeah. Alex Smith is a winning quarterback but not a championship quarterback right the offensive line is a lot more important because I don't care who you got in the backfield so yeah. I think you're going to see us make some more offensive line moves we're not afraid to do it in the first few rounds and I think if they can do that then then you might be able to recruit a good quarterback yeah I think this year is just kind of a find themselves year and next year will be when they make another run I don't think this will be a <laughs> double digit win for the Chiefs this year but yeah we'll see. Yeah, I, I, I certainly agree with you. The The good thing is, you know, I mentioned Brody Croyle. We've got a different regime that's in there and different sets of eyes <laughs> that are that are in there at this time. And, and so that that's the, the cross your fingers that they find a Tyreek Hill. Sure. You know, they find another Tyreek Hill out there that, that can benefit them. Well, JP, thanks so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. I want to thank the Kansas City Ice Center as well for hosting us today. Be sure to join me, Steve Fish, again next week at the same time for Good Sports, the Kansas City Sports and Fitness Show. Check out some of our other shows on YouTube. Search for the Good Sports KC channel. So until next week, be sure to read all about sports, health, and exercise in Kansas City Sports and Fitness Magazine. You'll find it online at kcsportspaper.com and all over Kansas City, and it's free. So pick it up today. Would you like to have us tape an episode of Good Sports at your business location? Call us today at 913-764-2050. Elite Gymnastics and Aquatics has been offering recreational and competitive gymnastics for over 40 years. From preschool gymnasts and swimmers to advanced gymnastic competitors, Elite Gymnastics and Aquatics offers a tradition of excellence. For information on classes and activities, visit EliteGymnasticsSwim.com or call Elite Gymnastics and Aquatics at 913-469-5554. And right now, save 50% off registration when you mention KC Sports and Fitness. Real people, real deals, real estate. Race Properties and Development buys houses. Call GP&D today and ask for Matt at 844-GPD-PAYS. For 120 years, Ren Insurance Agency has covered Kansas and Missouri families with reliable, affordable protection. Auto, home, boat, life, flood, or renter's insurance. Ren Insurance has been covering local families since 1896. To learn how Ren Insurance can protect you and in the process help others in the community, visit their website, reninsurance.com. That's W-R-E-N-N insurance.com. Or call today at 816-398-4111. Player and team registration is now open for the 3-2 Baseball Club of Kansas City. And tournament registration is open for the Teamwork Sports Invitational on March 31st, plus tournaments in April and June. For more information and to register online, visit kc3and2.com. 
catch the attention of sports fans in KC and reach over 70,000 readers of Kansas City Sports and Fitness each month. Call 913-764-2050 for details or visit kcsportspaper.com. Thanks for tuning in to Good Sports. Watch more episodes on the Good Sports KC YouTube channel.